Hello everybody, welcome to week 3 of the Quantitative Optical Imaging class. This week we are going to complete section 1 on the introduction to MATLAB with a look at debugging. Debugging refers to the process of fixing errors in code. Now making mistakes in code is very common at every level of programming, and even more so if you are just starting out. When you are programming, syntax has to be perfect. The computer will not understand what you are trying to ask it if you make a mistake, but don't be discouraged. In this video, we will go over the tools at your disposal to help you find the error and fix it. Now, before I show you how to debug, let's have a look at what errors are. There are three types of programming errors that you might encounter. Syntax errors, runtime errors, and logic errors. Syntax errors are basically typos in your code. They could be missing brackets or parentheses or a misspelled variable or function. These types of errors are the easiest to find and fix as MATLAB will not even attempt to run the code. Let's take a look at an example. In this script, I have started to declare a matrix, but I did not close the command with the right square bracket. When we try to run this file, MATLAB throws an error and says the statement is incomplete. The MATLAB editor actually comes with built-in error checking. Notice that when there is an error, the editor will display a red squiggly line under the command. You can think of this like the spell checker in Word. On the right of the editor window, there is a little box that shows the status of the code. If it is read like it is now, then the error checker has found a problem. Problematic lines are indicated by a red dash on the right. You can hover over the red dash and MATLAB will display a pop-up box with the error. The message reads line one in valid syntax and a file. The left square bracket might be missing a closing right square bracket. Let's go ahead and fix the error. Notice that after a brief pause, the little box here updates and it's now showing orange. This color just means that there is a warning. A warning means that the code will still run, but this could be a best practice or styling issue. Let's hover over the dash again, and we see the statement, line one, terminate statement with semicolon to suppress the output. So it's just reminding us that we should end our statements with a semicolon to avoid cluttering up the command window. Now these warnings you can either fix or leave if you want, you can also suppress these warnings in the editor by right-clicking on the highlighted part and selecting Suppress on this line. When you do so, you'll see that MATLAB will append a comment to the end of the statement, and the yellow dash will disappear and the box turns green. Now another error you might encounter is a runtime error. These are errors that only occur after the script is run, hence its name. In other words, the error won't show up in the editor like the syntax errors did. Let's take a look at an example. Here we have a script that aligns clear vars to clear our O variables. A equals 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, creating a five element vector, and res equals A six times two. Hopefully you can spot the error here, but if you don't, we'll find out in a minute. Notice that the editor doesn't show any errors here because our syntax is valid. Now let's run the code. Now MATLAB will throw an error as it is running. Let's have a look at the error message here. Index exceeds the number of array elements 5. Well, that gives us a pretty strong clue about what the error is, but where is it? Looking at the next line, we see error in runtime error line 4. Now we can click on line 4 and it will take us to the line with the error. So in this line, we are trying to use the sixth element of A to perform a calculation but A only has five elements. Now I just wanted to take time here just to remind you to please read the error messages because there's a lot of information that it contains. For example, it tells you what is going on, why MATLAB was throwing the error in the first place, and it also tells you the file in which the error occurs and the line in which the error occurs. Okay, let's use this error as an opportunity to look at the debugging functions in the editor. The first thing we're going to do is to set up a breakpoint. We can do this by clicking on this dash next to line 1. Notice that these dashes only appear on lines with code. This empty third line doesn't have one. Now when you set the breakpoint, a red circle will appear. Let's now run the code. Okay, notice that a few things have changed. First of all, there is now a green arrow next to the line where we set our breakpoint. The command prompt also displays K in front of it. This indicates that you are in debugging mode. And the status bar will also say paused in debugger. And the run buttons have now disappeared 
and are replaced by a number of new ones. I'll explain what some of these buttons do in the next video, but for now, the one you need to know is the step button. All right, let's start by having a look at this green arrow. The arrow indicates a line that MATLAB has stopped on, but hasn't run yet. Now, since we set the breakpoint on line one, the arrow starts here. Now notice that we have a variable in the workspace from the last time we ran this code. So now if I click on the step button, we'll see that the variable disappears because MATLAB has now run line one, which is the clear virus function. And the arrow has now moved on to line two. So let's click on step again. And MATLAB now runs line two, and we can see that the variable A has been created in the workspace. Let's click on step one more time. And whoops, that was a line with the error. So if you run a line with an error, MATLAB will exit the debugging mode. But that's okay, let's run the code again and click step twice more. All right, I want to pause here for a moment and show you a few other neat features of the debugger. While we are stopped in debugging mode, you can still enter commands in the command prompt. So for example, if you wanted to declare another variable, let's say b equals three, two, one, we can, and we can carry out computations as normal. So maybe C equals B times two. Now we can also use this functionality to run the line with the error. Now I just want to point out here that we have to do this in the command window, not by clicking on the step button in the editor. Otherwise MATLAB will exit the debugger again. Now the easiest way to run this line is to select the text in line four, then right click and select evaluate selection. Notice that in this case, we did not exit the debugger because the, the line ran in the command window, not the editor, right? The green arrow is still on line four. MATLAB hasn't executed it yet. Okay, so now we know the error. Index exceeds the number of array elements five. So let's try to fix it. Let's see if adding another element to A will solve the problem. Maybe we redefine A equals 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Notice that the variable a here has been updated. So let's execute the line as before. And we can see that this works. Great. So now we can simply replace the second line with our fix. Now notice that when you do so, the red circle turns gray. This is telling you that you have not saved your code yet. So let's go ahead and save it. And when you do save the code, you'll notice that MATLAB exits out of debugging mode. All right, once you fix the bugs in your code, it is important to make sure that you test it. So clear the breakpoint by clicking on the red circle, then run the code. And this time everything works perfect. All right, now one more error I want to show you, which are logic errors. Logic errors are the trickiest to identify because they do not cause MATLAB to stop. So this is code that is valid, but produces outputs that are wrong. Let's have a look at an example. Let's say we have some code that declares a matrix A, and we want to get the maximum value of each row. Now, if you remember, the function for this is max, and to get the maximum of each row, we have to operate along the columns, which is the second dimension of a matrix. So this code looks all right. Let's run it. And great, no errors occur. But let's take a look at the values of the variable max a. Now wait a minute, they are all twos. But matrix a only has values that are less than one. So how can the maximum value be a two? What's going on? So this is an example of a logic error. The code works, but our values don't make sense. All right, let's set up a breakpoint and step through this code. All right, when we run the first line, the variables were clear in the workspace, so that's good. Let's run the next line. All right, the matrix A looks correct. Now let's run the last line. Okay, so somehow the error will be on line six, um, and somehow the function max is giving us the wrong values. So let's see what's going on. Let's have a look at documentation, help max. Now I won't make you read through all of this, but the important line is here. C equals max x comma y returns an array with the largest element taken from x or y. 
So this is not what we want, but at least it explains why we're getting only twos. Right, the function is comparing each element of matrix A with the value of two. And since two is larger than all the elements of A, that's all we're getting. Now to compute the maximum along a specific dimension, we actually have to use this syntax here. M equals max X comma empty matrix comma dimension. So the correct syntax here is max A comma empty matrix comma two. All right, let's now save our code and test it. All right, great. Now we get what we want. So we have covered some basic ideas here for debugging. Now in general, you will find yourself debugging far more often than writing code. I just want to encourage you here, this is normal. Most programmers do exactly this. We spend maybe five minutes writing code and maybe hours testing and debugging to make sure it runs right. But it is so important to take the time to do this since as scientists, we have to make sure that our data is correct. So don't get discouraged but take this as part of the cycle of programming and start using the debugger.